Hi, it's Peachy. It's March, so that means it is Women's History Month. Each week, a different dynamic woman is going to be spotlighted. Sit back and take a few minutes to learn about the one being spotlighted this week. If you're so inclined, please like and subscribe to the channel to see what I have coming up next. I'm really trying to shake things up a little. Now let's get into the cast video right about now. At the heart of almost every important civil rights case for 20 years stood a tall, gracious woman whose goal was as simple as it would prove to be elusive. Provide dignity for everyone. You may not know her name, but Constance Baker Motley worked tirelessly behind the scenes to quietly change the course of American history. Along the way, she racked up a list of firsts. Motley was the first black female admitted to Columbia University Law School, the first black female to serve in the New York State Senate. She was the first black woman to argue before the United States Supreme Court. Of her 10 Supreme Court cases, she won nine of them. The 10th was eventually overturned in her favor. Motley was also the first black female appointed to serve as a federal judge. Constance Baker was born in Connecticut in 1921, the ninth of 12 children. Her parents came to the United States from the tiny West Indian island of Nevis. Her father was a chef at Yale University. Her mother was a domestic worker. Going to school in largely white communities, her first experience with discrimination came at 15 when she was turned away from a public beach because she was black. Always an ambitious student, she began studying black history and became the president of her local NAACP Youth Council. Though she aspired to become a lawyer, there was no money for college. After high school, Motley followed in her mother's footsteps for a short time, struggling to earn a living as a domestic worker. She then found a job with the National Youth Administration, a New Deal program that provided work training and education for young Americans between the ages of 16 and 25. One of her roles at NYA was speaking on matters of public interest at community forums in the New Haven area. Motley was 19 when New Haven native Clarence Blakesley, a wealthy white contractor and philanthropist, heard her speak at a local African American social center about why the center wasn't attracting the black community as intended. Never shy, she raised eyebrows by pointing out the center's board was 100% white and Yale educated, which meant the black community had no opportunity for input and therefore no interest in the center. Motley so impressed Blakesley that he reached out to her high school, researched her grades, and then reached out to her with an offer to finance her college education. She chose to attend Fisk University a black college in Tennessee, partly because she had never been to the South, a rigidly segregated society clearly defined by signs reading colored only. After her first year, she transferred to New York University, from which she graduated with a degree in economics in 1943. Columbia Law School followed, where she volunteered with the NAACP's Legal Defense and Education Fund and clerked for Thurgood Marshall. As a young attorney, Motley's strength was working behind the scenes during the painstakingly detailed preparation and presentation of lawsuits that would pave the way for blacks to become full participants in American society. Always elegantly dressed with a classic string of pearls befitting a dignified, successful litigator, Motley spoke in a low, measured voice but she soon found herself in the center of a firestorm in the South as blacks, along with their white allies, fought to bring an end to segregation that stretched back to post-Civil War Reconstruction. The early 1960s leading up to the passage of major civil rights legislation in 1964 and 1965 were marked by increasing national tension and major victories for the civil rights movement and Motley was front and center. She represented black students seeking admissions to universities throughout the South, 
1961, she won admission to the University of Georgia for Charlene Hunter Galt of PBS's McNeil and Lair Report, NPR, and the New York Times. In 1964, her high-level profile in the civil rights movement drew her into politics. She accepted the Democratic nomination to the New York State Senate on one condition, that it wouldn't interfere with her NAACP work. She handedly defeated her Republican rival to become the first black woman elected to that body, winning re-election in November. But her career reached its apex in 1966, when President Johnson, acting on Senator Robert F. Kennedy's recommendation, appointed Motley America's first African-American federal judge during her tenure, she ruled on behalf of welfare recipients, low-income Medicaid patients, and a prisoner who had been unconstitutionally kept in solitary confinement for 372 days. In 1978, her decision to allow female reporters into the New York Yankees locker room turned Major League Baseball on its head. Judge Motley continued to serve as a federal judge until her death at age 84 in 2005. What can I say? Women rock. You know you can't keep us down. Is the month of March coming to a close already? It went pretty fast. I hope you learned something about someone you didn't know already. Please have a good morning, afternoon, or evening, whatever time you're watching this. If you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, you're about to get another chance. Bye for now.